greeting to everyone from Kusag. This is the uh, actual episode of the podcast series of the Institute of Advanced Studies. Um, my name is Tomasz Herman, I am staff. Uh, I'm an agronomist and uh, I'm dealing with environmental research. And um, uh, <coughs> I'm very welcome uh, to come to uh, Kusag. Uh, so I would like to introduce you, uh, a new uh, <coughs> invited guest in the uh, podcast series, Mr. Peter Pozzi. And uh, despite his uh, young age, uh, he has a, a great uh, career. So uh, we would like to talk about uh, uh, his background, uh, motivation, a research topic and uh, maybe future plans. So <coughs> welcome. Uh, and uh, first of all, maybe we can go back to the to your university life, uh, <coughs> if you don't mind. Uh, if I know well, uh, you are coming from Kesthe, uh, the Georgikon faculty, and uh, how was uh, your experience at this uh, faculty? Uh, maybe that was the time where uh, where you mm, meet the uh, genetics um, deeply. So please explain your experiences. Yes, we have the we have the same uh, agricultural background because, uh, as you mentioned, my uh, my university year. So my my alma mater is is Georgikon, and uh, I. I studied there for my uh, for my masters and uh, also f I also for my PhD. Uh, so I got my got my degrees from from Georgikon, which was back then it was very interesting because back then it was the uh, University of Vesprim, which later merged to the University of Pannonia. But uh, all but remained is is, is Georgikon. And, uh, mm -hmm. when, when did you graduate? Oh well, that was uh, <laughs> a <laughs> long time ago. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 not 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 a long time ago. It was uh, my master's finished in uh, 2007, and uh, I finished my PhD in 2012. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So a decade, basically, uh, 15 years. And uh, I the, the first time the first time I arrived to to Georgicom was uh, was uh, 20 years ago. That was uh, that was quite some 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 time. I don't want it to. I don't want it to. I always say that I don't want it to study agriculture, but I, in the end, I don't regret it, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because uh, first first I wanted to I wanted to go to Debrecen, and uh, I always tell them that you didn't accept me <laughs> uh -huh. at the university, and then then uh, I, I started my, my my degree there and in the first time I didn't like it because it was applied sciences but um, this uh, but th this, this also takes to the later topic how applied sciences and basic sciences intervene and uh, how they complement each other because I got this view exactly from 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 Georgicon uh, how how the applied sciences mm -hmm. work and what kind of basic disciplines you have to you have to study there, and uh, then from uh, from an applied topic, my my knowledge and my my path took me to to basic research. Exactly, for example, what happened with the uh, mm -hmm. with the sheepy guys, uh -huh. <laughs> I would say so. So <laughs> I have had, and in a way, and in a way, I think it's somehow interconnected. Uh, and back to back to genetics. Back then, it was it was a very interesting part because I started in in in, uh, in the lab of Jan Staller, and uh, he was he was back then. He returned from Japan and uh, he was setting up his little lab. And uh, I had the best time uh, with those guys. We, we, with those three guys, uh, we are still connected and uh, we're still in touch. And uh, that was that was the best time to start to do pipetting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> are you participated also in the in developing uh, phase, uh, develop of the, of the lab, uh, genetic lab of uh, Taller Janos? 
uh, laboratory. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, 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 definitely. It, yeah, definitely. It was, uh, it was one of the, it was one of the, one of the best, best times of my student life, basically, mm -hmm. because it, 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 it greatly influenced me how I, uh, how I design my, my experiments or what do I, or what do I do? Mm -hmm. And, uh, we were the first three students uh, to 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 expand the lab, basically, and uh, we spent most of our time time there uh, uh -huh. pipetting. It, 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 it was it, w it was really really an awesome time. Mm -hmm. Nice. And graduated uh, as an agronomist or uh, as a plant uh, protection engineer. Uh, that was the uh, that that's a tricky that's a tricky one because I graduated as a doctor of plant health. Uh, in specialized in research because uh, that time there that, that was a very nice community there of, uh, of uh, a lot of uh, you know uh, Yula Sharinger, uh, UC Bachi and and uh, and uh, a lot of uh, Oriana or uh, Yuzhev Horvat, uh, Gabor Yanyi and, and 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 all these virologists and and uh, people uh, who were interested in plant pathology and or plant health in in general, so they came up with the idea to establish a discipline of of plant plant pathology or plant health, and uh, then they started this experimental course uh, for masters. So I was one of the first students in the. I think I graduated in the third or fourth. Uh, wave of that, so of, 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 uh, of that experimental course. So we started to plant these trees, like one, two, three, <laughs> four, and, and, and they're, they're still there. Mm -hmm. So I had the privilege to, to have people coming from, from uh, Budapest, from that, then, that time the Plant Protection uh, Center uh, uh, of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. Now it's like I don't know. It went on went on a reorganization. I don't know where they belong to, but they were like uh, Kirai, Clement, Zoltan Clement, and uh, uh, Levente Kish, and a lot mm -hmm. of people, uh, or Varyash, uh, who 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 lectured there, uh, insect physiology and, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. all these things. So they they came to Caste, and uh, that was a very nice spark and a very nice uh, very nice thing, which which created the atmosphere of inquiry, I would say so. I see, I see. And how was the, uh, this big trip from cast hair, little cast hair to Finland? Uh, after your PhD, uh, you finished it and uh, directly go to, to Finland, to Helsinki? Oh or yeah, uh, well that was a, that was an interesting. That was an interesting thing because uh, I started. Uh, my first experiments were in vitro culture of, of potatoes and uh, studying potato viruses and uh, vine relatives of potatoes, basically. And uh, I got hooked on a group. Let's say, <laughs> let's say this from the South Pacific, uh, which are distant relatives of potatoes, and uh, then. I was very much interested in that, and uh, there was a plant virologist, uh, Yari Valkonen, who's very well known for interpreting different genes, mm -hmm. and uh, I was I was interested how the wild relatives developed, and uh, where they are coming from, what kind of genetic resources they have. So these are these are basic questions, and uh, how they how they develop. So there was a there was a professor there, uh, Jaakko Huvinen, in 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 Finland, and uh, and uh, then he was interested in the evolutionary processes. So I applied three times uh, to go there for six months. Oh, I never I got it. <laughs> I never got it. And uh, then I totally said that it's like, okay, if I, if I, didn't, uh, if I didn't succeed, then okay, we have like, you know, there's this typical Hungarian say, saying that it's like, you know, it's like Hungarians apply three times and then one is just like another time, an extra time. Uh -huh. And then if you fail, then you totally failed. It, then I, I applied another time and then I got that one. But uh, mean, but meanwhile, I, I applied for basically for six months visits at the same time and they all got accepted. Uh -huh. <laughs> so then I found myself going to Finland for <laughs> uh, for 
half a year, and then I found myself being there for mm -hmm. two years. <laughs> Directly to the University of Helsinki. Uh, that time, uh, yes, that time I started at the uh, at the Viki uh, Viki campus, which is now, uh, which is back then was the Bio Center. So there was Bio Center oh, Freely. So uh, now it's totally reorganized, but. Uh, Back then it was Biocenter Free in the Department of Biosciences, which had this 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 part of of uh, phylogenetics and uh, evolutionary biology. So that was a big big swap for me, uh, doing doing this kind of uh, pure basic research. Mm -hmm. Okay, <coughs> and uh, now we are here in Kest in Kuseg. Uh, the Institute of Advanced Study. Uh, what is your relationship with the IASC? So how do how did you get this? Uh, maybe do you have a um, common research program or uh, or uh, something uh, other issue? Oh yeah, the uh, the the common the common uh, connection is 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 basically the Festetich family. Because uh, you are interested in the history of uh, genetics too. Uh, yes, uh, the, the, the interesting thing is that the deeper you get into your field, uh, the, more, the more you ask about it, what, what your field is. And then you start to ask questions, for example, if you're a chemist, you ask what chemistry is. If you are a physicist, you ask what is, what is physics. And then I ask the questions, question, what is genetics? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, for, and for that question, you have to you have to really go back to, to uh, deeper philosophical things, how people interpreted uh, the evolution, uh, not the evolution, but, uh, but the biological inheritance and biological traits, how they are disposed and uh, how they are appearing within, within generations. And then it has an interconnection with, the, with animal breeding and sheep breeding more specifically, and uh, that is, of course, going through Festetich, Imre Festetich, who was the uh, who was the uh, brother of the founder of my of my university, Georg Kahn, who was like Jörg Festetich or Ger George Festetich. You can you can call it in both ways. So that is the uh, that is the connection because because uh, my uh, my uh, my my Bafni professor. <laughs> He was uh, he was very fond of of, of Imre Festetich and his writings, what he did, and uh, he eventually lived in Kursk. So so if you want to study this topic, then you have to come here and then you have to dig out the uh, what you what you're going to find about mm -hmm. Imre Festetich and the palace and the and the history and uh, and all these and all these parts, and you have to go to Georgikon. So so or to Moravia and to, to, to see all these things because they happened locally. So that's my, that's my connection with, with oh, I IOSC yeah. who, who, who were eventually here <laughs> in, yeah, yeah. The, in, in the Festetich Palace and uh, they were renovating the Festetich Palace at that time. So they asked me, it's kind of, I, I was interested in that topic and then they were like, okay, we have a match here. Mm -hmm. uh, would you like to write more about it? And I was like, okay, I could, I could do that. Why not? <laughs> I see. And uh, where, where did you find the uh, more, is more, uh, most interesting and much more detailed uh, background and history of uh, Festetich or Imre Festetich uh, life in Kesthei at the Georgikon or uh, yeah, somewhere in Budapest? Yeah, that's a, that's still a, that's still a mystery, I have to tell you, because uh, because uh, Imre Festetich is quite a, quite a quite a mysterious, uh, not not I, I would say not a mysterious figure, but uh, he's uh, he's a person what uh, in Kursk he has a local local uh, uh, let's say, I I wouldn't say cult, but uh, local respect. People talk about him. In a pub, and yes. they have uh, they have different stories, and then uh, it's something like I would I would compare uh, I I would divide 
uh, how a historical figure accurately is and what people think about it. You have, for example, mm. Bouvar Kund, or you have Saint Stephen and the chopped off right hand. Mm. You know, it's kind of like, but it doesn't really belong to Saint Stephen, but people take it for a spin any, anyhow in August 20th. Uh, and people, people have these legends. And, uh, and, and it is the same thing for local people. What Imre Feshtetich was that people think that he was, uh, he was a mighty warrior who fought, mm. in, the, fought in the war and... Uh, he did this, he did that, and then he snapped, and then genetics was born. And uh, it's not really true that way. Uh, he, he, was a, he was a very shy person. And uh, he, all what we know, and uh, I had to go through, uh, I had to go through the, the Feshtetich archives in, in, in Budapest. Very little things are left of him there. Almost, uh, almost nothing. That's yes, twenty twenty-seven point three three kilometers of, of, of research data, which mm -hmm, was mm -hmm. uh, which was digitized, and they went through and cataloged everything, and and uh, really nothing there. Uh, so uh, what remained of Imre Feshtetich is one single uh, one single portrait, uh, which was found in in in, uh, in the market accidentally. Mm -hmm. Uh, his writings, what he published uh, in Ökonomische Neuigkeiten und Verhandlungen, uh, that was in German. And uh, he has, these are, these are nine, nine articles. I recently found one, which was written by him. I can explain why it is so hard to find his papers. And there is, uh, there is one single paper what he published in Hungary. So this is where how you know how he was writing, and uh, a sort of uh, collection of personal letters, what he sent to to Bruno to the Moravian Agriculture and Natural Science Society, what he written in German, where you can actually see what kind of personality he had. He he was very shy, I would say, and uh, he had an excellent humor. Uh, for for sure, because he's talking about his sheep like uh, sleepy, sheepy bunch. He calls uh, the uh, like a friend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh -huh. And what he's writing <coughs> there is that uh, when he travels to Bruno, he's putting his sheep inside the carriage. <laughs> re 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 really, really. This is why it, it, because he's writing about them that that uh, there is this my favorite fluffy fluffy friends. And uh, when he's establishing the uh, 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 local sheep breeder society, which was established, but it wasn't really functional, uh, then he's also talking about that uh, people, uh, like about animals, like people, same level. So you should kind of come there with your favorite fluffy friends. <laughs> 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 so that, that, that means that he had an excellent humor in, in, in many ways. So. <laughs> Uh, about about fighting, uh, he he was a soldier, but we really don't know what what kind of soldier he was. But um, what we know is that he had most probably a serious injury near Bucharest, uh, which probably left him almost crippled, but but uh, very much injured, uh, because uh, we don't know for sure. Uh, but but we know that after that he 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 just totally withdrew from from being a soldier and then he started to study French poetry and um, animal breeding, natural sciences, and then he read quite a lot. The Festetich Library in, in Gaori Koninkesta is very uh, very rich in those sources. So you know, I didn't go through, but maybe you will, maybe you will find some 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 annotations of Feshtetich in in those books. For Mendel, these things exist. So, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. for example, Darwin's work. There is a copy. There is a copy of Darwin. In the Feshtetich castle. No, uh, but uh, for example, uh, I'm mentioning the annotation. Uh -huh. So, for example, in Bruno, there is one copy of Darwin's book, ah, okay. what Mendel annotated. So these, uh, kind of okay. so these kinds of things could also mm -hmm. exist for, for Feshtetich. So, so that, is his, uh, that is his personality, uh, what people often 
kind of misplace or misinterpret. And uh, the other thing is that his personal life, which was full of tragedies, he had a tragic life. Uh, his, uh, his wife died, and when he was writing his uh, most successful papers in 1819, so first of all, he was fighting over his, uh, his, uh, his inheritance with his brother, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, that, was, that, uh, that was very, very hard for him. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, with George, George, and, George. And, uh, and, and, and then after they settled it, and, uh, but then he moved here to, to Kusek, Kusek, Poch, and, 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 uh, and kept the sheepies here. Uh, yeah, I, I, I tend to talk, I, I tend to talk about like them like that, because mm -hmm. it's so catchy how he's writing about it. Uh, so this is what remained of him, and then after uh, George died, and then that was in 1819, so he was he was struggling with that, and then his wife died, so he had to had to remarry, and then uh, his family line died out, and uh, it it was full of tragedies. So so he didn't have a successful military career. Uh, he didn't have a really successful uh, family life, and uh, he was also mockered. Uh, for his work, what he did with 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 sheep, so after that he was he was, um, but he but he still had a good sense of humor, I'd say mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, so and uh, Imre George was uh, the younger brother of uh, George uh, Festetic, who was the founder of the Georgikon Faculty. And uh, do you know? Uh, Imre, because Imre Fertetis has a great experience about uh, agricultural practices, agricultural management, maybe deeper knowledge in uh, animal breeding, sheep breeding. And maybe uh, Imre has had also teaching activities in, at the Georgikon, isn't it? Do you have any, uh, and, and did you find something about this? Uh, uh, teaching activity maybe as far as i know he he did not it's very interesting uh, yeah uh, uh, but uh, there is laszlo festetic laszlo uh, uh, who was the uh, who was the son of george who who did uh, he he wasn't he wasn't teaching there but he was uh, he was involved in inviting teachers uh, to uh, to georgikon so what we can what we can see here there is a deep connection between the Moravian agriculture and natural science society mm -hmm. and uh, and Georgikon. So, for example, Karoy Bulla, the first teacher of Georgikon, he arrived from that society, uh, or Christian Karl Andre, uh, who was the uh, leader or the secretary, kind of like the mastermind behind the uh, agriculture society. Uh, then he was also an assessor at Georgikon for a very brief period. And uh, many of Georgikon's teachers uh, went there to, to, uh, to have study trips. And uh, they have had very lengthy letters and experiences. So there was an existing uh, teach teacher-student exchange program. For example, Laszlo Festetic did travel there to the meetings, and uh, he was there several times. Uh, Andre's, uh, Andre's, uh, Andre had two sons, Emil and Rudolf, and uh, Rudolf was aware of Georgi Khan, and, uh, and uh, Emil also traveled to experimental farms uh, connected to, to, uh, to Georgi Khan. For example, he <coughs> died in Kishbeer uh, at, a, at a study visit. Uh, we we know that so it was it was very 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 active and after andre was expelled from from bruno he moved to stuttgart and uh it was very hard for him to keep in touch with uh, people left in 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 bruno especially with his uh, with his family uh but uh, two teachers of uh of georgikon visited him there uh there is uh <laughs> There is uh, there is evidence for that. I, I, I didn't find those letters, but uh, George Kurutz wrote a very nice book about it. 
a couple of years ago, and uh, and uh, he transcribed and translated those letters, and uh, it, 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 it truly comes out. And they were discussing the sheep breeding issue, <laughs> of course, and inbred sheep, and, uh, and 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 all these things. And so 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 there was a very active active connection mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, between the two institutes. Uh, and uh, but. Um, but Imre, 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 as far as I know, he, he, he did not intervene with that. Okay, so the Festetich family has a huge uh, professional network, uh, like you. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, if anywhere you, uh, you, you have two uh, different places in Finland, one is uh, in, at the University of Helsinki as a associate professor and one is uh, the uh, uh, Finnish uh, Museum of Natural uh, History and uh, while in Hungary you have connection with uh, uh, OTK, uh, Center of Agriculture uh, uh, Research and also ERTE, Ötvös Lorand University um, and of course um, Institute of Advanced Studies uh, do you have enough uh, empty place in your timetable? <laughs> no, no, I, I, I don't. I, I just, uh, I just follow my heart. <laughs> that's my, that's my problem. Uh, yeah. That yeah. takes me to, to, to many bad places, Ma not many mad, many bad decisions because I like to, I like to help people, and uh, I, I, I like to. I like I, I like to be be involved in, in, in different research projects, and uh, I it's very hard to say no to a student or to a researcher that uh, I believe I believe uh, uh, great minds can come from anywhere. Uh, it can be any part of the world. It can be any place in the world, and uh, that's what the university has. Its uh, University of Helsinki has its motto. It says it's kind of uh, with the power of knowledge for the world. So for me, that that translates into if you knock on my door, and if you uh. and if you send me a manuscript that uh, hi, I'm totally struggling with this, I'm going to go through your manuscript and I'm going to and, and I'm going to comment on that and I'm going to send it back to you and then uh, we can talk through Zoom and. Uh, I have this kind of openness. Uh, it's it's uh, it's very hard to live with, <laughs> I would say so. But uh, the connection, uh, the University of Helsinki uh, is kind of uh, the Finnish Museum of Natural History is the uh, independent institute of the University of Helsinki. Uh, okay. So uh, so we do belong under oh, the University right. of Helsinki, and. Uh, the, univer in the university is expanding its it, its network in a way that they try to make interdisciplinary organizations. So, for example, the High Life, the Helsinki Institute of Life Sciences, or the Vitki Plant Science Center, uh, has different people from different background, and uh, they try to make these virtual spaces uh, for people to to uh, interact or be involved with. So uh, I had the privilege to basically submit uh, submit an application for a research group and that was that was accepted. So uh, the teaching, we are involved in teaching activities as well. Uh, my, those courses are of course growing through the university. Mm -hmm. It's the plants, plants in a Changing World and uh, the other one is biological collections. Mm -hmm. So what we try to explain is is not through necessarily disciplines. We move through questions, and uh, we give an active knowledge to students, uh, which is, I think, very interesting. So in our case, how do you interpret taxonomy? Why taxonomy or basic sciences are important? How, why why you want to name a species? So so that comes to uh, a basic question, how do you use that knowledge? Mm -hmm. And um, it's a research university, so that means that you can only teach what where you have research experience, so you have to tell examples from your own research. Oh, 
uh, and uh, then you have to have to show that to 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 students, which is I think a very good uh, very good scenario and a very good uh, very good privilege and uh, very active very active involvement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <coughs> so uh, your headquarter is uh, in Helsinki uh, since ten years since uh, 2012 uh, uh, and uh, uh, how is your uh, family uh, and uh, how is the life in Finland um, and did you get uh, familiar with the Finnish language and uh, what is your life <laughs> how is your life my Finnish is horrible I make <laughs> I make I make horrible, mis uh, hor horrible mistakes. I, I I do understand a lot. I I, I get along in in uh, in uh, Kiriakieli, which is the basic language, and uh, I can I can I can deal with with things, but uh, with special issues, for example, in, in, at, at a doctor, I don't want to I don't want to say something very bad because <laughs> there are some there are some very bad uh, intonations and. Uh, Party TV is, is something what is what is missing from uh, what it, what is missing from Hungarian, so you won't you won't understand that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, what what that what that's for, and then you can make horrible mistakes in in, in every in, in every ways. But um, uh, I don't spend all my time in in, in Helsinki. I, I I did in the past ten years. I I, I did one point. Five years in field work, ah. mostly mostly in the global south. So in in, in Africa, uh, or 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 in the South Pacific. Uh, so I'm I'm interested in the bio agrobiodiversity of the mm -hmm. South Pacific. Mm -hmm. So there, what you can find in Finland are basically mosses and lichens, <laughs> which are still fun to deal with. But uh, if you want to study something else, then you have to go and get it. So we, for example, have uh, the, the museum has a, a research station in Taita Hills near Kilimanjaro in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there is an active, active work going on there. And uh, with different trips and with different uh, different uh, scholarships I did spend considerable time in uh, in the Radboud University in Wageningen um, in the Netherlands and uh, my favorite place and my I think I can call it my second home the uh, RBG in uh, Scotland the uh, uh, Royal Botanical Garden of, of, of Edinburgh I I think if I sum it up I spent all my in since 2013, I spent al almost all my summers there, and uh, collecting or just just climbing up Munros. You know, you know what's a Munro? Munro. No. Yeah, a Munro is a is a Scottish hill which is above 1,000 uh, meters. So uh, there there are, there are certain amounts of Munros in 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 Scotland, and uh, then wh how it goes is that you climb. You, you hill walk, uh -huh. right? You, you you don't do climbing. You you hill walk, and you can only not do hiking. Yeah, some it, well, walk. you can yeah you can do that. Uh, it, <laughs> it, it's kind of like but you but it, but you don't but you don't call it like that. It's kind of like you know Scottish is a is a different way of <laughs> of, of thinking of, of, of thinking. It, I I I really love Scots, and uh, then you. Yeah, I just I just collected eleven Munros so far in my life, and uh, COVID COVID was was uh, was stopping me doing it. But I mm -hmm. hope I can I can resume doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <coughs> are you traveling a lot? And uh, if you traveling, maybe because of uh, uh, because of a conference, because of a field uh, work, you may be collecting. Uh, plants and seed samples and uh, and uh, and storing in uh, Helsinki uh, do you have uh, experience about that so how many uh, how many species how many varieties do you already have oh yeah the, uh, the um, 
that is something what you can only do when you have a collection permit. So let's yes. let's start let's start uh, let's start with the uh, with the paperwork here. So you can <laughs> okay, 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 <laughs> because this is because this is a podcast, and then you can only collect. This if is an offline podcast. Yes, <laughs> the, 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 the only thing we, you can only collect if you have the papers, and um, the uh, Nagoya okay. protocol is very strict uh, about this uh, about the, these issues. But when you do have the collection permit and uh, our museum does have, mm -hmm. uh, then you are able to collect uh, lots of interesting things. And uh, as a museum, uh, as a curator uh, in, in the museum, I have different roles. Uh, one is curating the greenhouse collection. Uh, the other one is, uh, is looking after some, the West Coast Planetary Barn collection and uh, teaching research, getting research money. So. Lots of different, lots of different tasks, mm -hmm. and uh, but uh, yes, uh, the the difference is between our greenhouse and uh, public greenhouses, is that we do conservation efforts. So uh, more than more than uh, I think, eighty five percent of our collection is from its original location, so it was collected collected in the wild. So we don't go for the fancy flowers. We go for the uh, the interesting and interesting and conservation status uh, things, so that's that that's what we do. So mm -hmm. so indeed, some of the some of the collections are are my my collections there. I see, I see. Um, <coughs> so you are dealing with the genetics and the, um, but uh, what could you? Say about the bioinformatics and the and the biostatistics because uh, um, in that time when you were in Kesthe uh, at the Georgikon and uh, uh, getting started um, maybe deeply in uh, genetics and uh, um, biology knowledge, bio science of biology. Um, that time there were. No, nothing uh, so uh, huge computer IT infrastructure uh, in Kesthei, but maybe uh, is another situation in Helsinki. Uh, what is the situation there? Yes, it's 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 kind of when you when you talk about genetics, it's uh, most most people most people. The situation is the, f is the following with genetics. Most people are familiar with DNA and, uh, and uh, Watson and Creek, and uh, they, they are kind of like, that's the 50s, 1950s and uh, 20th century. And uh, they peop average people know about that and the molecular biology revolution, which kicked off after in the 80s. And uh, now, after, now after Corona, and uh, the COVID pandemic, people know PCR for <laughs> sure. But before, uh, but before that, when I started to do uh, uh, do genetics, that was the time of the enzymes and the molecular boom, mm -hmm. and uh, people know people didn't know what the hell is a PCR. Now everybody knows it's a PCR because of the PCR test. So so people know these things, and uh, in school you learn about uh, Mendel. And he did something with peas, and. Uh, these are these are the two points, uh, what people know, and maybe the human genome. That, w that was a human genome done, but uh, then what is happening today is is it is another information boom, uh, where 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 not, uh, but genetics is not done in the lab. You do a lab experiment, one cube experiment, and then you have high throughput sequencing technologies, and then you collect huge amounts of data from one experiment and then you, we just sit around it for eternity and we still don't understand it. So, so this, is, this, this, is, this boom is exactly, uh, is, is exactly the same, same magnitude as how the, for example, the molecular boom was. But uh, average people and, and, and outside people don't understand that. So they don't have a grasp of it. So this is what genetics is today, is, is uh, information technology based on AI deep learning and, and, and high throughput sequencing. Uh, because we do have access now to, to 
previously we had model organisms. So what is a model, a model organism is a kind of like a very, a very good question, but we did go for, uh, especially in plant biology or in, in, or in any kind of genetics field, we, we went for organisms which, ha which have a very small genome, uh, which can <coughs> be sequenced and which could be still economical, and then we were looking for different traits and what is going on. And, and, uh, but then now with high frequency sequencing, we are able to access basically any genome uh, with high accuracy for uh, with a uh, with, with low price, and these genomes are very big, and uh, they are non-standard size. So how these things are interconnected, how not one genome or one gene is interfering or interacting with one another, that's not a question now. <coughs> how hundreds, thousands or ten thousands of these genomes from different time and space okay. interact with each other, how they developed, uh, what parts are, are, are holding information and how they are connected with. That is uh, what, what genetics or genomics, we're living in a post-genomics -genom era, so genomics is also not. <laughs> uh. so, so for that you need high throughput, uh, high throughput uh, sequencing and you need high computational accuracy and high computational power to to build up uh, basically uh, uh, a research project based on non-model organisms. This is why uh, th th this is why I say model and non-model mm -hmm. organism because it's kind of like you have a model organism and then after if you study start to study something, then you collect knowledge so that that organism becomes a model too. So mm -hmm. <laughs> every every non-model organism, in a way, after some, it becomes a model of something. So okay. it's a it's kind of like a way of polite way of to to say what you do. <laughs> uh, you mentioned uh, your supervisor was uh, Janusz Talev, and uh, if I know well. Uh, <coughs> the genetic lab in Kestre is already established and uh, very well equipment. So uh, could you imagine if uh, some, somewhere in the future uh, you come back to the Georgicon for a research project or uh, Nobody teaching? knows. Nobody, <laughs> it, no, 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 nobody knows. It, it's kind of like life is, life is like a long road, you know, it's kind of, you, you start to, you take a path and then sometimes you, you take a different path. Your interest changes and uh, your personality changes, mm -hmm. how, you, how you age, what you do, and uh, how you think about things. Yes, they, uh, yeah, yes, they do have very interesting uh, research topics. They have, uh, they have very, very well established fields. For example, they are very cool and very good in, 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 in ragweed ge genetics, for example. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, they they were very much interested in that topic, so nobody knows why not. <laughs> mm, it's kind of you can you can say it's kind of like when you you know it's kind of when you there's Black Sabbath and then uh, Ozzy Osbourne playing in Black Sabbath and <laughs> then he quit he, then he quit and then it's kind of like no I'm never going to play it's kind <laughs> of like and then they had the 13 album, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. so, so you can you you, you can never mm -hmm. say no. Okay. So, and uh, uh, <coughs> I saw somewhere, uh, you mentioned also DNA, and uh, I saw somewhere uh, written uh, in the, on the internet, there is a specific type of DNA, historic DNA, historical DNA. What does it mean? Uh, could you say something, uh, just a short overview? Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's actually very timely because uh, Svante Pabo got a, got a noble. So uh, why, I'm, why I'm mentioning this, because uh, establishing ancient DNA analysis uh, uh, is, is, is uh, very much of his work. Uh, basically, in his, and at the end of, the third, end, end of his 30s, he started to, started to extract DNA out of Egyptian mummies. And, uh, and also different different animal species, and uh, then it was proved that you can f of that tissue, deceased tissue, that tissue of different 
different organisms which were preserved or which were dead. Uh, DNA is a very strong molecule. Uh, so you would say you would think that it doesn't survive, but 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 actually it does, and uh, there's a there's a d big difference between well, not much of not much of a big difference, but it's very good to make a distinction between ancient DNA and historical DNA. Ancient DNA is uh, is, is a DNA type which is much more older, thousands of all thousands of years you can go back ten thousands of years so uh, that is that is something historical DNA is, and, and, and it's and it's much more in a smaller different particles what you would say it, it, it's very much degraded the historical DNA is uh, also a type of ancient DNA but it's much more recent so only a couple of hundreds of years of window what you what you study backwards so it's kind of like the same thing, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. but ancient DNA is more older. Historical yeah. DNA is much more much more recent, and it, usually it is in a better shape. Uh, so it's not that degraded. But that is also mm -hmm. DNA degradation is not necessarily collinearly. Uh, it's it, it, th there is no regression uh, between the d d the size of the fragments. And there's no correlation how big the fragment is and how old the DNA s the DNA sample is. But uh, but um, yeah, so Svante Pabo got a got a Nobel for for, for his work uh, with with Neanderthals and human ancestors. What he did on 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 these things. So so uh, after uh, th this is a very good age because you could uh, now it now it is going to give a boom. <laughs> mm -hmm, to this mm -hmm. uh, to this scientific field which is which is very good mm -hmm. uh, it needs much more uh, funding in, yeah, in, in, maybe in this is your future plan so more activity I in that field I always like to like to work with uh, with these things first uh, first I, I I was always really drawn to 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 this uh, I s uh, the first experiments what I did I think was in 20 to 2003 or 2005 I, I, I studied uh, the hair uh, the 200 year old hair barn specimen of Paul Ki Paul Kitaibel mm -hmm. Kitaibel Park Kitaibel Park and, and uh, that was very interesting for me so after that in, uh, in, in Budapest I went to Budapest and I got the little uh, little hair barn samples and uh, and that was always that, that was always very exciting for me. It was uh, much more curiosity driven. How you can so it, it, it stimulates a nerve, and then you get this <laughs> heroic <laughs> moment. You, you you feel that, and mm -hmm. then you know that you have you are at the right place, and then you're you're doing the right thing. And um, so I followed that path, and uh, now I now I do these kinds of these kinds of research so but what you have in a museum is is uh, basically lots of living collections but that's only a tiny fragment mm -hmm. so what you mm -hmm. have is a lot of dead specimens so it's basically a morgue if you if you, if you think about it lots of lots of dead <laughs> things collected a long time ago uh, which in my opinion they are like windows to the past mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so with a little treasure trove what you can what you can open up and then get some knowledge and uh, in how you interpret that for uh, for contemporary knowledge or contemporary problems we can we can learn quite a lot from mm -hmm. from the past I think. All right, <coughs> uh, congratulations for your researches and uh, your <coughs> career is very nice, and uh, thank you for. <coughs> Accepti accepting the invitation and uh, I hope uh, <coughs> uh, I hope to see see you later somewhere within maybe within the wall of this institute or somewhere maybe in guest hey in in a pub <laughs> I don't know yeah for sure Xeros was my my my, my best my, favorite my, my, my favorite <laughs> okay. um, I, if I'm in guest hey I'm always good for some fish yeah. And uh, some fruits, yes. that's for sure. <laughs> so let's see. So see you in Xeros. Absolutely. <laughs> <coughs> thank you very much. And uh, thank you, the audience, uh, also their uh, uh, attention. 
and see you next time uh, the next uh, episode of uh, podcast series of the institute of advanced studies goodbye